Hello students, in today's lecture I have decided to show to you another experiment whereby you will see that doing a thermodynamics experiment requires you to think a lot more than simply plugging data into a working formula. And today's uh, experiment would be conductometric measurement of solubility, solubility product and heat of solution of a sparingly soluble salt at room temperature. So, uh, let us start by considering the sparingly soluble salt that we are going to use in our experiment. It is barium sulphate. It is a white solid powder which uh, can be dissolved in water, but it is not a uh, good uh, solution. I would say that only a small part of the solid barium sulphate will get dissolved and therefore, I will have only a partial dissociation of the salt upon dissolution in water. So, this is the chemical equation that I will write down for this particular uh, uh, salt. 1 mole of barium sulphate solid that uh, was taken when it is put in water it undergoes a partial dissociation giving me barium 2 plus aqueous and sulphate 2 minus aqueous. Then the equilibrium constant for the dissolution of barium sulphate in water will basically be given by uh, definition in terms of the activity of barium 2 plus ion in aqueous medium multiplied by activity of sulphate 2 minus uh, uh, ion in the aqueous medium divided by activity of barium sulphate solid and activity of H2O liquid. Now, following the convention I can put the activity of solid barium sulphate equal to 1 which gives me that the equilibrium constant will now be dependent on the concentrations of the barium 2 plus and sulphate minus ions in equilibrium through their respective activities and also the activity of water present in the medium. Now, since it is a, a, a sparingly soluble salt there will be only a few uh, ions present in the medium and an excess of water and therefore, I can say that the uh, concentration of water in my uh, equilibrium mixture will all remain almost constant. As a result of that instead of this equilibrium constant a new equilibrium constant can be defined which is K into the activity of water and both of them will be a constant at a given temperature. So, the new equilibrium constant will now be called the uh, solubility product and this by definition is a product of activities of the two ions produced by partial dissociation of barium sulphate in water. My task is using an experimental setup to find out this KSP or the solubility product. But before going into that let me also have a look at the fact that this KSP can be written as S squared. So, what is S? S is uh, C by C naught. So, if you took C moles of barium sulphate and put it in uh, 1 liter of water in that case S would be the solubility and you could uh, uh, define that S is the solubility of barium sulphate in water in the units of moles per liter. Please remember that if you take say a few grams of uh, barium sulphate and put it in a large excess of water, you do not know how much barium sulphate actually underwent dissolution to produce this barium 2 plus and SO4 2 minus. Therefore, from my experiment I intend to find out how much barium sulphate dissociated which means that I am looking to find out the solubility S of the salt. And once I know S 
I can very easily find out the solubility product because the solubility product is nothing but the square of the solubility. With this background, let us now go back and try to understand uh, how do I find out the concentration of ions in an aqueous solution. It may be aqueous solution of any salt and uh, in this case in for today's lecture, we are going to measure the specific conductance which I give this uh, notation kappa sol of the barium sulphate solution. And I know from our uh, knowledge of electrochemistry in the high school days that for an ionic uh, solution with concentration of c moles per liter, the molar conductance lambda is given by lambda naught that is the molar conductance at infinite dilution and a term which is linear in square root of concentration. A is a characteristic constant and C is the concentration in moles per liter. But please remember because of the sparing solubility of barium sulphate in water, we are working in the limit where I have a nearly uh, uh, infinitely dilute solution. In that case, I would say for a solution of a sparingly soluble solid, uh, salt, I will be uh, uh, more or less uh, correct in assuming that lambda that is a molar conductance of the uh, solution is approximately equal to lambda naught. Therefore, for barium sulphate, the lambda naught that is the molar conductance at infinite dilution by Kohl-Roush's law gives you uh, that this must be the molar conductance of barium 2 plus ion at infinite dilution plus the molar conductance of the sulphate anion at infinite dilution. Now, moving ahead, I know that by definition specific conductance of each constituted uh, constituent ion, uh, if I call it kappa ion, in that case kappa ion is given by molar conductance multiplied by the concentration. So, in this case I uh, would say that I can write down the specific conductance of barium 2 plus is lambda naught of barium 2 plus multiplied by C and uh, specific conductance of sulphate anion is lambda naught of sulphate anion multiplied by C. And then with these two results in hand, I can say that the total specific conductance of the solution due to the ions barium 2 plus and sulphate 2 minus would be given by kappa ion which is the contribute some of the contributions of the two ions present due to the dissociation of the barium sulphate in a water. And that gives me kappa ion is proportional to C where the proportionality constant depends on lambda naught of Ba2 plus and SO4 2 minus respectively. So, eventually I can write down that kappa ion is lambda naught of barium sulphate into C. So, please remember C corresponds to the concentration of the ions dissolved in the aqueous medium and this is the quantity that I would like to find. So, what is C? C I know is kappa ion divided by lambda naught. So, the task now is starting from this equation, if I know kappa ion, if I know lambda naught of barium sulphate, I should be able to find out what C or the solubility is for barium sulphate at a given temperature. Now, we also note that uh, it is not easy, uh, it is not possible to find out only kappa ion. We are going to measure the specific conductance of the solution and this is uh, specific conductance of water plus specific conductance of the ion at a given temperature. And this is valid uh, for the dilute solutions that we are talking about. Therefore, I can rewrite kappa ion as kappa solution minus kappa water. And I understand that both these quantities can be measured in an experimental setup where the 
specific conductance can be measured. Therefore, the task is well cut out. You should be able to measure the specific conductance of water at a given temperature. Then you solubilize barium sulphate at the same temperature and measure the kappa solution. Then you have kappa ion and then you use this kappa ion in combination with the lambda naught value of barium sulphate from literature value to find out the solubility. So, here is a general setup for the measurement of conductance of any solution. So, what we have we are showing here are as follows. So, this is a conductivity meter which is essentially a potentiometer which has been calibrated to show you the conductance of a solution that has been taken inside this beaker. And inside the beaker we have taken the uh, uh, solution of uh, for which the conductance needs to be measured and we dip a cell which is connected to this conductivity meter inside this uh, test solution. And inside the test solution we also have put in a magnetic stirrer and then we use this uh, outside uh, 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 driving knob to rotate the magnetic stirrer so that the solution in the cell the, uh, the solution in which the cell is dipped that has an well equilibrated concentration of the constituent ions. So, this is a very basic uh, experimental setup that is available in any physical chemistry lab and this would give me a measurement of kappa solution. This would also give uh, me the measurement of kappa water at the experimental situation, uh, experimental temperature. But please remember that in this particular case, I have to plan my experiment very carefully because I am trying to do many things simultaneously. I need to have a saturated solution of barium sulphate. At the same time, I need to find out the, uh, 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 the uh, specific conductance of water and the specific conductance of the solution. So, this is how the experiment is planned. You generalize, uh, you uh, will have to also remember that you are going to determine the heat of solution and the heat of solution can be determined by knowing the uh, logarithm of uh, Ksp at different temperatures. Therefore, the working principle should be that I should be able to estimate kappa ion from the measurement of kappa solution and kappa water at different temperatures and then I should be able to estimate the Ksp from uh, my solubility and then I should be having a list of values of ln Ksp as a function of inverse of temperature in Kelvin and then I should be able to plot ln Ksp as a function of 1 by t and this you expect to be a straight line and the slope of the straight line will give you the heat of solution. So, this particular experiment from where you are trying to find out not only the room temperature solubility and solubility product, but also the heat of solution. There is a lot to design and plan beforehand. So, this is the experimental setup that we have used. We are using a hot temperature bath over here, which is connected to three setups as you uh, uh, see here. So, this is actually not uh, uh, connected to the hot temperature setup, but it is uh, present in uh, over a magnetic stirrer uh, meter and there is a magnetic stirrer here. This is a beaker that we will use to dissolve the uh, barium sulphate salt. Now, this is the setup where it is connected to the connectivity meter and we are 
going to measure the uh, uh, specific conductance of water and it is the second cell another cell identical setup, but we are going to measure the uh, specific conductance of the solution over here. So, what is it that I have in these uh, uh, two uh, beakers? These two beakers they have in them a big beaker and a small beaker and what we do is we uh, say that we place the small beaker inside the bigger one and fill the bigger beaker with water. So, this is a schematic diagram of these two beakers with water jacket and we control the temperature of the water from outside by passing water through this hot water uh, reservoir. Okay. So, the basic idea is as follows, I will start by equilibrating the barium sulphate solution here and by the time it equilibrates, I will measure the temperature uh, the, the specific conductance of water at different temperatures and then by the time it is a saturated solution of barium sulphate is uh, prepared, I will take the some amount of that solution as test solution in the second cell and measure the conductances. So, what we do is as follows, first we start by taking the solid barium sulphate solution using a spatula, only a small amount of it is required and we add it to the first water jacket uh, beaker uh, that I have sh uh, shown you uh, in the previous slide and then we add about 100 milliliter of distilled water. So, once that is ready, we are maintaining this at room temperature and we add a magnetic stirrer and then we start the magnetic stirrer at just its speed. This is important because the solution should not be flowing out of the beaker. So, this will help us in getting a saturated solution of the barium sulphate salt in water. Okay, let me go to the next part. We next start working with the next uh, water jacketed beaker. This is the cell that we are going to dip in the uh, water that has been taken inside and we attach a thermometer to it. And then what we do is we allow the system to equilibrate and we start measuring the conductance specific, con uh, we actually measure the conductance and knowing the cell constant, we measure the specific conductance of water at the room temperature. It is actually very important to calibrate this particular instrument and most of the times the laboratory personnel will calibrate this for you. And what you find is that there can be two scales in which you can set, uh, you can find the conductance value. For the barium sulphate solution, the conductance value will come in micro Siemens. So, what you will do is so, what you will do is now after recording the specific conductance at uh, room temperature, you will set the thermostat to hot. And when you set the thermostat to hot, let us say you fix it at uh, 35 degree centigrade and then you wait till the temperature becomes constant at 35 degree centigrade and the corresponding conductance value is not fluctuating, but a constant. Then you this way you go on recording the conductance of the solution, uh, conductance of water 
till you reach let us say about 55 degree centigrade. So, as you see that this is a, a typical set of experimental data at room temperature of 27 degree centigrade with a cell constant of 1 centimeter inverse and this given data of lambda naught of barium sulphate is 144 Siemens uh, per uh, square centimeter per mole. What we have found is we started from say 30 degree centigrade recorded the specific conductance of water and went all the way up to 55 degree centigrade at an interval of 5 degree and recorded the corresponding kappa water in micro Siemens centimeter inverse. This basically tells you that this the water sample that we are using distilled water this is a poor conductor of electricity because it is micro Siemens per centimeter. And uh, basically what happens is if you have distilled water there will be traces of some dissolved organic and inorganic ions which will be responsible for the conduction of electricity through them. Now, when you are increasing the temperature say from here to somewhere here, what is happening here? The each of these ions at higher temperature are moving faster. So, they have a higher mobility and therefore, their conductances will increase and this is what is being reflected in the values that you have seen here. So, pure water does not have free H plus and free OH minus ion detectable by the normal conductivity meter that I have shown you. So, whatever conductance you see here are because of the traces of dissolved ions that are still present. Now, if you look at the measured values of uh, specific conductance of the solution uh, by the design of your experiment you will start with 55 degree centigrade and then you will allow the thermostat to cool the solution down to say 30 degree centigrade and record the conductance values at the same temperatures where you have recorded the values of conductances of water. Okay. Now, what is your observation here? At low temperature the conductance of the solution is lower and it goes higher and higher up as you increase the temperature. So, why is this happening like this? Now, you must realize that when you are looking at the solution of barium sulphate in distilled water at lower temperature you not only have the dissolved ions traces of them, but also some Ba 2 plus and SO 4 2 minus resulting from the dissociation of barium sulphate and putting these ions in water. So, at low temperature therefore, the conductance that you see are arising mainly from these ions and the traces of dissolved ions. But if you go for higher temperature in those cases the barium sulphate you are seeing a much larger in, uh, increase in the conductance of the solution. This kind of increase was not observed for the water. So, this can imply only one thing. Now, there will be a larger number of solvated Ba 2 plus and SO 4 2 minus ions present in the medium, which also means that more and more barium sulphate would be dissociating and sending its constituent ions in the aqueous medium, implying that the solubility of barium sulphate increases with temperature. So, uh, what we will do is to go for further analysis, I will find out what kappa ion is by taking a difference of kappa solution and kappa water and from here finding out the value of C. So, here I find that at 55 degree centigrade my measured C is 5.6 into 10 to the power of minus 5 moles per liter and here I have used this value of lambda naught of barium sulphate. So, I will go ahead and uh, plot the temperature in degree centigrade along x axis and the values of C 
in uh, 10 to the power of minus 5 moles per liter along y axis and draw the best fit straight line through my experimental data then extrapolate it to lower temperatures. So, if this is my room temperature then the corresponding value of solubility will give you the room temperature solubility s which in this case is found to be 2.6 into 10 to the power of minus 5 moles per liter and immediately I find that the solubility product at this room temperature is 6.8 into 10 to the power of minus 10 mole square per liter square. Now, why did I use this graph? That is because when you are carrying out an experimental measurement, there may be inherent experimental errors uh, uh, which is coming out of imperfect functioning of the conductivity meter or the temperature not being stable or you may not have equilibrated the solution properly. Therefore, to uh, overcome these uh, small errors in your actual experiment, you can uh, draw this best fit straight line and determine the solubility from your graph. Now, moving ahead by knowing the uh, solubility you can find out L and K S P and this is going to be the plot of L and K S P as a function of 1 by T where T is expressed in Kelvin. And here you see that this is a straight line with a negative slope you are in the fourth quadrant of this two dimensional plot and the slope itself is a negative number and from Van Hoff's equation we know that this is equal to minus of H naught solution divided by R. Therefore, the heat of solution here will turn out to be a positive quantity which indeed tells us that the solution of barium sulphate in water is an endothermic reaction. But is this what we expected? When we looked at the experimental data, we found that more and more barium sulphate was going into the solution as I increase the temperature. By La Chatelier principle, you are expecting that for an endothermic reaction, the reaction would proceed in the direction of absorption of heat as the temperature is increased. So, for an endothermic reaction, the preferred uh, direction would be towards the product. Therefore, more and more uh, barium 2 plus ions and sulphate 2 minus ions will be produced and there will be an increase in solubility and which will cause the uh, specific conductance of the solution to increase. So, in this lecture, what I have done is I have shown you how a comprehensive understanding of the experimental situation can give you a proper uh, estimation of thermodynamic quantities like heat of solution. So, I hope by now you understand that thermodynamics is a complex subject, but it has been framed in a very simple manner. And if you understand how the reaction is being done and what all approximations are being made while writing down the uh, expressions from thermodynamics when applied to that experimental situation, you should be able to extract useful information from your exercise. Thank you.